Welcome to the Jill on Money Show. It is Saturday, April 8th, and we are here trying to have interesting and illuminating conversations about your money. Now, this weekend, we've got a guest very excited to present to you, Maya Lau. Now, she is an award-winning journalist who I think got a little sick of the whole journalism thing. She's got a brand new podcast. It's called Other People's Pockets. It's with the folks over at Pushkin. They've got a lot of cool stuff there. Maybe you've heard of a guy named <clears throat> Malcolm Gladwell. Also, Maya Shanker's uh, slight change of plans. I really like that. Anyway, you should just uh, check it out. There's a lot of good stuff over at the Pushkin universe. And so we like to uh, help them out. You've heard Michael Lewis on this podcast. He's also at Pushkin. So anyway, maybe Maya Lau is the next podcast you start to think about. Today, we're going to learn a little bit about her brandy new podcast, Other People's Pockets. Here's the first part of our interview with Maya Lau. She's an award-winning win- former investigative reporter for the LA Times and The Advocate in Louisiana. And listen to this. Her work led to the ouster of the warden of the notorious Angola prison in Louisiana and helped spur new laws that made police disciplinary files more transparent in California. Why the heck are you doing this, Maya? You're now talking, you've got a money podcast. You've now drifted down into the lower rungs what? of humanity I, with me. I, you know, you're you're just, um, you're sleeping on, you know, this per- personal finance work. Um, I know I've been doing it my whole life. So I'm, I come for, I come to it very naturally. You're so, way too self-critical. Um, yeah, it was it's a big departure. I just always found myself interested in money and personal finance on a personal level and started to get uh, pretty frustrated with it being a newspaper reporter. Um, of course, knew that newspaper reporting wasn't going to make a lot of money. But then as I got a little bit older and did things like have a kid, I just it it started to get more serious for me. Like, wait, I really need to figure out my financial situation and what the rest of my life is going to look like. And I started to interview people just on the side about uh, leaving journalism, how they left journalism, how much money they're making. And I kind of felt like, you know, I would love to have a podcast where I get to just have these conversations because everyone has a story about money. Everyone wants to hear what other people are making. Um, and at first, it did feel a little, I don't know, it just felt maybe basic. It felt like, oh, that's just a little thing that I'm interested in. But then I kind of realized that the the universality of money is kind of the appeal. You know, everybody has some relationship with money. And so I left newspapering. I actually have my own company now where I do financial investigation in the investment world. And that's a completely different thing than this podcast. Um, But then I also launched this podcast where I get to have these interesting conversations about money and kind of the actual details of people's personal financial stories. And it really feels in some ways, like an extension of my journalism, I still get to interview people, which was always really my favorite part of being a reporter. I loved the questioning and just talking to people. I didn't like the writing part of it. <laughs> so it's like, how do I just still do the the asking questions part and then not have to write anything? <laughs> so so um, and, and, and so how do you how do you choose the people who you are highlighting on the pod? I work with a team of people. It's with Pushkin and also Little Everywhere is the podcast production house I work with. We we throw around names. It's people that we've heard of, semi-known, you know, famous people or just anyone who has an interesting take on money. So it's not just rich people. It's maybe people who don't make a lot of money but have something to say because everybody does have something interesting to say about money. A lot of it is uh, people who make money in a really interesting way. Like one of the first people we had on was Mistress Marley, who's a financial dominatrix. So she... Wait. Yep. Hold on. Family (laughs) show. Hold on. Before you go crazy, this is a family show. I got got a little bit taken to the woodshed about saying, oh, God, let's talk about what is the definition of a financial dominatrix. So she is a normal dominatrix, what you normally think of with dungeons and whipping bondage and and all that. Yeah. But also she has another part of her practice that's financial domination or findom. It's mostly online. 
she berates people online and just posts things like, hey, you should give me your money. And then people, it's mostly men, just send her money. There's no sexual contact. There's no sex. These people get off on the loss of power that they have from their money just going to this person they don't know. Occasionally, she will meet up with people in person and put a collar on them and take them to the ATM and they will take out money for her. And then she gives <laughs> the money to uh, they give the money to her and they walk away. Um, so that is just an example of somebody who makes money in a really interesting way and has a really interesting viewpoint on money and why it has the hold on us that it does and why it affects our emotions and our sexuality sometimes. So, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, in terms of how we choose people, it's just, you know, we think about people who like, gee, you know, I'd love to hear what this person has to say. We also interviewed... Cord Jefferson, who's a writer in Hollywood, he wrote on Succession and Watchmen and many shows that people know. You know, he's somebody who has been interviewed many times about many different things. But I, at least, had never heard him be interviewed about the specifics of his personal finances. So Mm -hmm. it's kind of like, yeah, I love having people on where you've heard them before, you might know their name, but have you ever heard them talk about exactly how much they make or how they feel about their finances. Like, it's just mm-hmm. a different angle. So, yeah, it's just um, whoever we <laughs> whoever we're finding interesting at the moment. What about this is, is, I mean, listen, this is what we do for every single day. So we're seven days a week. We answer financial questions. I'm a certified financial planner and I love, and I, I always say I'm a, a voyeur. And Mark and I hear from people all the time. You know, we have thousands of people sending us questions every single week. So you're just telling the story. You're not, you're just sort of sharing what is going on in their lives. You're not providing advice. You're just sort of opening a window into different people and what's going on, right? Yeah. I mean, I am not a a money expert. The way that I describe it is I'm really an average person. Of course, I have huge amounts of privilege and, you know, there's aspects of my life that are not average, I guess, but I am a I am a real person who does not have a formal education in money. And I'm figuring this out with the listener as we go along together. So I'm not here to say, like, you should sign up for this kind of high yield savings account. You know, it's more like, let's hear from real people about their money journeys. Sometimes they've made mistakes. Sometimes they've done things. um, You know, I sometimes talk about how my mom at one point was putting everything on credit cards and she eventually paid it off. You know, it's just interesting to to know her story. Um, she's not been on the podcast, but like on a personal level, that's not advice that anyone would give. But sometimes just when you hear this is the reality of how this person made it work, um, I think that we can all feel a little bit less alone, a little bit less like, Uh, We're doing something wrong if we're not following the one size fits all financial advice. And I think it's just, yeah, like you said, voyeurism. I think it's financial voyeurism. I think it's a bit of um, moving towards salary transparency to just have these open conversations and have it be maybe a little bit less taboo to ask these questions that we always want to ask but feel a little bit uncomfortable doing. You know, you mentioned transparency. So it's just on. So, uh, you know, my real job is I work at CBS News and I was just doing a segment about um, pay inequality and the gender pay Mm -hmm. gap and the gender wealth gap. You know, it is quite fascinating that pay transparency is and the sharing of information, especially among women and their co-workers, men, women and whoever, is very helpful. Do you think that that will become more and more prevalent in the culture? And, And do you think that would be a way to narrow the wage gap? Yeah, I already think it is becoming more part of the culture. The younger the person you interview, the more likely they are to be more open about their money. It's just not as taboo as it used to be. You know, I don't think everybody absolutely needs to put their salary on Twitter and all people need to be totally transparent. I think that sometimes there are reasons why you'd want to keep things close to the vest. Like if you're about to negotiate a new salary at a new job, you know, you don't want them to know your salary or your old job. But I do think that it being a more comfortable conversation is a way to figure out what you're worth, 
And you mentioned kind of women talking amongst each other. I think that women also need to talk to white men about what they're getting paid. Like you don't want to. Oh, that's the that's the that's the holy grail. Yeah, because you... if you have somebody who will actually give you the info, then you're then. The, and I said this on the air, and I think that like my coworkers who were the anchors on the set, they were like, "Well, I'm like, dude, everyone knows your salary is reported in the press. You're huge anchors at a network, but like I'm talking about our producers. Mm-hmm. I want them to talk to their male cohorts because that's when they find out the information." That's where like the the rubber meets the road, right? Yeah, knowledge is power. And I just had a friend, she's a reporter, reach out to me. And she just said, you know what, I just realized that every time I go in for a salary negotiation, I'm always asking other women what they make. You know, even as a reporter, you would never write a story where you're only interviewing a certain type of person or, you know, you want a broad range of voices, right? And so I think that we all need to do that when we go in for a salary negotiation, just knowing your worth in general in the market, asking as many people as you can is is good. And, you know, it can be a private conversation, it can be a more public conversation. But I think that the more that this just feels like, oh, yeah, this is just a thing people talk about. Um, Mm -hmm. I think that that's I think that's positive for people getting paid what they're worth. What do you think people want to talk about less their sex lives or their money? Their money. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I I, um, interviewed Wednesday Martin. It, It hasn't come out yet, but she is the author of The Primates of Park Avenue, which was a book looking at the real life world of wealthy mommies on the Upper East Side in New York. And she's a sociologist. And, you know, she's written about a lot of things. In more recent years, she's moved into the world of sex and pleasure. And she's talked about having an open marriage. And she told me that it was more uncomfortable for her to tell me how much she got on her book advance than it was for her to talk to me about her open marriage. So if I come on your show and you're highlighting the girl who used to be a trader and a financial advisor and now um, a media person, I'm going to have to disclose exactly how much money I make? Yes. And your net worth and... Oh, man, that's a hard (laughs) no. That is such a hard no. I was going to try to get on your show, but now I'm not going to. Wait, why? Wait, tell me why. I personally do not want... I mean, if I could do anonymize myself for sure, but... I have a I have a spouse who is highly private about money, and she would have a complete conniption fit if I did that. Yeah, Just absolute I mean, conniption fit. Yeah, and everyone has different comfort levels, and you know. But let me ask you: Would you listen to other people talk about? Like, do you want to? Well, hear I mean, what- <laughs> I, I talk about it every day. You yeah. Know, listen, I, so like my life is a moneyed life, right? So yeah. I had. Remember, like my first job on Wall Street, I was a trader. And so it was like you knew exactly how much money you made every single day. Um, I was a money manager and sort of I am a certified financial planner and financial advisor. So I talked about this all day long with people. But it was in the but the higher goal was not just to know how much, but was to solve a problem. So I'm very agnostic about amounts. And I am not judgmental, which I think makes me good at my job. But I think the reality is that for me to put that out there, um, yeah, I don't feel, no, I don't. I, I talk about it with Mark. Like we talk all the time about like the money we make and we share that. But I don't think, yeah, I, I don't think I would be, um, I don't think I would feel good about that for yeah, myself. that's fair. And, you know, and when we um, have people on my show, you know, we talk to them beforehand and let them know what the show is about. And here's some of the things we're going to ask you. And if you're not comfortable with it, then this is not the right fit. And right. we understand. And so right. you have to be you have to agree to yeah. the terms. Yeah, I get that. OK, if you're a voyeur like I am, then all you need to do is actually just keep listening to this podcast, because that's what we do all day long. Mark and I listen to your stories and we hope you can can have a little bit of access to the advice that we give. If it's something that's going on in your own life, of course, you need to contact us directly, jillonmoney.com. Click the Contact Us button and let us know if you'd be willing to come on the air. Don't forget, we've got this brand new service. It's called Jill on Money Live. And there you have access to quarterly live webinars. The first one with Ed Slot is now posted. It's up behind the paywall. So if you actually subscribe to Jill on Money Live, you can watch that all on your own. Don't forget to leave us a rating and review and lift someone up. Change your work, change your wealth, change your life. Thank you for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. 